or so, depending on the score. Now, Knowing our record so I far. Attracted a lot of range yesterday. So we would expect this one to potentially continue in that same direction. And honestly, I think it is going to be the case. I don't see either team just running away with this. But there's a little asterisk that I put with that whenever I'm casting a liquid game. And that is, it really does depend on Paolo and Nesk. You never know what you're going to get. We've all heard the comments that have been made in the past about if you've never been run over by Nesk at LAN, you've never been to LAN. And there's always that possibility for them as a team. But that said, Exit have got big names themselves that are capable of having those explosive games. So it's always a possibility. But... I think these two are going to be pretty tightly matched. Absolutely. I think seeing the Flores come away here is pretty interesting, especially paired off with the Goyo ban. Yeah, Flores, really powerful on this map, especially when trying to push in towards Aviator. You'll see shields, Banshees, ADSs, all manner of utility scattered around the map's table, and that's where Flores really comes into his own. So with that taken away, I thought, hey, this would be a wonderful chance to bring out a Goyo here, make use of those Vulcan canisters that aren't too easily removed, but no, being banned away here, very simply. The Wamai, the last ban coming through, quite interesting as well, because it does leave the mirror online, Tim. I don't think we're going to see it on every single site, but a couple of these sites, are made nigh on impenetrable if you bring the mirror along. Ask would have had an answer though. He's got the Twitch to start things off here. Starting out in Aviator Games, the go-to site on this map, Tim, is where we'll see our first showdown. Yeah, pretty stock standard as a defender on Villa. You need to be able to lock down Aviator Games. What are we going to see from the attackers, you might ask me? Well, it's going to be one of two things usually, or maybe a hybrid of the of maybe a hybrid of the uh, the pair. But generally speaking, <laughs> it's going to be north or south outsided for the attack. They're going to try to get hold of Study, which is right in front of you, the main stairs that are at the bottom of your screen, and the attackers try to lock that down. They'll open up the wall on the left-hand side of your screen most of the time, try and get through in behind bar and get the diffuser down. Alternatively, they push from the north side where they come through master bedroom, trophy, statuary, take over the top side of the map, and then they come through the single door where the map table is and try to get the diffuser down in behind the vault door. Now, the interesting thing about the north-sided push is it just offers a little bit more space, a little bit more room for the attackers to breathe, whereas when they push in through that south side, ah. very funneled, very limited in space, but we'll the see rat. what Liquid choose to go for. Well, that depends and whether or not they can even get into the building, Tim, because we've got a bit of a rat lurking around here. It's spirit. As we said. Just lurking, waiting. Knows there's likely to be some rappelling onto that 90 window, and as soon as that chance comes in, he's out of there. Looks towards the right-hand side, but didn't look towards the left. The reverse, actually, but got himself stung in the backside. They did get one on the other run out as well, so a good bit of early aggression from Exet takes at least one off the board in cost of the Jaeger. Not a bad trade. As you take away those Finca Juice stims, you also get rid of the two frag grenades. Could have been a very different start for Exet there when Spirits goes out that window. As you say, if he checks his right-hand side, he gets resets as well, and they're in a 5v3, but he was unfortunate and looked off towards the left. They were trying to guarantee that kill onto. They wouldn't have known it at the time, but guaranteeing the kill onto Ness. Gomez, he's going to find one onto Ask, and that now leaves us 4v3. And Exet are going to be pretty happy with that. Any man advantage for the defenders on an aviator game side is a good thing because you can just start falling back, essentially. They can just allow a little bit of room for Liquid here. They'll maybe leave one out on the roam on the Trophy Master, Trophy Statuary side, just make it a little bit more difficult for them to push forward. But now they can just start holding angles. It's kind of the story of the game these days. I mentioned this a little bit on the A stream yesterday is now that we've got attacker repick in the game. Well, getting out of the map and being disruptive is the way to go. Otherwise, the attackers are coming at you with the most optimal lineup, in their opinion, to make an attack happen. So you need to be disrupting it on the entry into the building, around the perimeter, and then really, as a last resort, be taking that fight on the site itself. As you said, though, I think Exet will be happy here in this four versus three, and they've still got two C4s in back pocket, two smoke canisters. They've got the Warden here to deal with what would have been the threat coming out of the Capital. But with that off the board, there's only, what, one flash left in Reset's back pocket? Not really a lot of threat coming in from the side of Liquid here. It's going to be relying entirely on the gun skill of these three players. That's it. It's going to be about finding those frags. And you can see Exit are uh, well aware of that. There's three of them locked up da -da. in vault. And they're just going to stay da -da. there. They're just going to hold those da -da. angles. Da -da. There goes the Nitro. Beautiful throw from Diaz. Taking Palu down in 90. There goes Resets. This could be a disaster for Team Liquid in round one. Exit absolutely running over the Brazilians in Aviator Games. And that is a great start 
start for the North American side. Yeah, for a team everyone's favoring to be, putting in place to be the favorites for this competition, Exet making that look like oh, it was a scrim basically in the first round, Tim. A couple of runouts finding the kill, two more kills out on the perimeter. And then when it comes to a side push, you've got a free C4 kill, a swing with a shotgun. Not once did Exet ever really look pressured, to be honest with you. And maybe it's a case of Liquid needing to wake up a little bit here, give them a couple of rounds. They are also attacking Villa and they've kind of got to understand, okay, here's how Exet want to play this game. Now it's on us to adapt. Going to be heading into round number two then. It's going to be the next top floor site. Going to be trophy and statuary this time around for Exit. And basically, everything that I said last time about those two attacking options is pretty much still true, except it'll be done in reverse. So coming in from the north side, that's where you've got the limited space. Trying to get yourself hold of bathroom, closet, master bedroom, and push forward from there, opening up the triple wall in to statuary. Alternatively, we do see attacking teams pay a lot of attention towards the side side try and push up and use that space through aviator games last time liquid although they did lose two men quite early they tried to get up those main stairs they got somebody into 90 it was a little bit of a hybrid push from them so i'd maybe expect similar now a little bit of attention to the side side or maybe a bit into astro and then the rest coming through master turns out gomez is a member of the church of mk14 1.5x i believe tim Running around there with the DMR on the Aruni. Personal favourite. You'll know this many, many times over by now. It is interesting how you probably get half the players play with the DMR. And for a while, DMRs were the go-to. They were available on an op. You played them. The Roni kind of fell back into obscurity when they got the changes coming through that reduced the overall mag size. Whereas now, some players are starting to creep it back in and make good use of it once again. But you just cannot ignore that one or a couple of two-tap kills to, uh, to get through a couple of members of the attackers. It's just a wonderfully fantastic weapon for the defenders to utilise. Yoga's going to be holding down around maps for the time being. He's the sole presence on that south side. But as you can see, Liquid mostly shaping up for that north-sided push that I talked about. So they're looking to get themselves inside of Master. I'm just interested in where the other Liquid players are and whether there's anybody working underneath as well. Um, it could be very useful to use your nades to also try and get utility cleared out. Um, but at the moment, not too much presence there. I think Nesk has actually pushed forward and forced Yoga out of maps as well. So... This is actually pretty good for Liquid. Not even halfway through, and they're starting to get themselves into good positions here. I can't ignore Yoga at the bottom of red stairs, though. Like, he's yeah. in a spot here where he's just waiting for his opportunity. Him. Like, I think he's being conscious, one, is there someone holding the angle, which you would expect for a team that is ready to deal with that, that isn't playing things like the Nomad. Equally, will you run past the drone on the way through? So we'll just keep on taking his time here, and once his team make the call of OK, they're starting to push now, they're executing, that's when you hit them on the flank. And we saw it quite a bit yesterday in some of our games. I look back to BDS's game, for example, getting slapped by Chiefs on the flank on Oregon. It could well turn out to be the same here so we'll keep a close eye on him and see how that plays out for liquid we're getting down to the tail end of things here that last 60 seconds coming into effect this is where we've got to start seeing an execute come together except i've just waged a bit of a war on the drones there as they were they had nine lefted liquid and then within a matter of about 30 seconds exit have picked up a ton of them oh, and it's down shot. to four beautiful from resets as he's going to take gomez down and that gets us underway here with liquid finding themselves a little bit of an advantage but kino just deploying that toxic babe canister into bathroom He's going to hit Astro Window as well, doing there's a little Yoga. bit of damage, but there's the flank. Yoga managing to sneak up and get PSK completely unchecked. Kino with the Toxic Babe canister kill on to Ask. Nesk leveling things out, three versus three, but the kills keep coming. And this time it's Exet who take the lead once again, three versus two. Nesk inside a side, 2v2. You know, if anybody can find these kills, it's going to be Nesk. He's on the Finker, he's got the LMG, so he's got everything he needs, but no, he's got no life, Des. He needs some of that. Kino shuts him down and he's having a big game so so far, it's all up to Palu to clutch this out, and he cannot as Kino finds himself another, and that is going to be Exet dominant again over Liquid in round two. Bodega, quite excited. <laughs> of course he is, and so is Kino, all smiles oh, all around. Love him. I mean, he got a 3K in the first round, a 4K in the second. He's absolutely flying right now, and I, I've, I've always feel for Yoga, right? Roaming is like marriage. You're committing to this for a long, long time. Two minutes, he spent sat at the bottom of those stairs waiting for the right opportunity. He comes up, enjoys it for about three seconds, and then Palu's there to shut him down. It really is a long time to commitment to get any kind of result there, but that one kill on the red landing just removed the threat that was coming through onto the trophy door, or the strategy door, sorry, and from there, Liquid just ended up feeling a little bit thin across the board. Another big round coming out for Exet, doing well on the defense so far. Liquid still looking for that elusive first round. Look at Keno! 
I said, yeah, three K round one, four K round two. He's Seven laughing. Zero. He's laughing. The reverse James Bond. This is what I said, wasn't it? Coming in, there are big players on both sides. Palu, Nes. Kino, you know, that can just do this in a game, that can just have that really explosive game. And right now, he's doing exactly that. But also, Exet are set up perfectly for Liquid here. It's like they know what they're going to do, they're on top of it. And as I said, I think that comes a little bit from Bodega as well. There's no fear here. Did you hear Kino was going to change his name before this game? What was he going to change it to, Des? Uh, to Key, yes. <laughs> Go away. Um, right, we're in round three, and we are going to be heading down to dining and kitchen. It's more than likely going to be the last site that we will see out of Exet. They'll then rotate themselves back up and rinse and repeat through Aviator Games and Trophy Statuary. So Liquid are going to be trying to do similar to what they did last time. They want to get themselves established in Trophy Statuary again because it's directly above the site. If you're ever wondering in your rank games where these downstairs sites are, oh. if the defenders go there, basically, they're underneath the top floor sites. So dining and kitchen is underneath trophy and statuary, and then living room and library is, give or take, underneath aviator games. It's a little bit more 90 corridor, but you'll let me off for that. So right now, they want to get control of that top side of the map. They want to get the upstairs locked down so that they can get Palu in there on the sledge and open up all those verticals. Just really feel for Liquid here. They need something in this first half as well. They lose this site. You've gone through that first quarter, right? You've gone through the full rotation of the first three, which means you've really got to buck up your ideas in the next three to get anything in that half. And starting things off with a kill onto Spirits, who was meandering around down the bottom of the main stairs, trying to catch someone on the double doorway entry out towards the west is a good way of getting things balanced. Yog, does he know that someone's sat above here? I don't think he's fully aware of Ass now working his way down the corridor, but Ass finds a second in the round. That's just what you want. Down goes the man, not quite finished off. And I'm not quite sure whether or not Yog is going to be aware where? It was a high cost. Ask getting that kill was the information uh, that they needed, essentially, to know that he was above Yoga and he manages to hit him with the Nitro, but it's a big price to play, especially when you don't get the kill. Ask is back on his feet and he's going to be looking for those vertical angles down in towards side. Diaz goes for the Nitro, but won't find anybody on that one. Not quite, not quite. As the vertical work comes in from Palu on the trusty sledge, his go-to main that you always see him on, sometimes stepping across onto the buck, and I think we have one of the members of Liquid playing that back in round one, but here at least it's just a sledge that you're relying on to do all that work. PSK, having chewed through all three breaching rounds already, or breaching charges, sorry, has done his own function of work upstairs. 45 seconds remain, we're getting that hot, that the wall open up now into side as well. So Liquid have got all the components coming together, Tim, but as we all know, it's about that final execution, the timing, the mechanics, everything has got to come together. It is using those drones, only four of them remaining, and there's a big double, and guess who it is? Of course it it's is. It's Kino coming in, exactly when Exet need him, 9 and 0, and he just keeps rolling here on Villa. Diaz, he manages to get one, oh Kino with the third in the round onto PSK, <laughs> and it's falling apart for Liquid again. It is now 3v1, and Exet can just no! hold their angles. They can wait for the no! fight with resets, and there's silence. Uh, moving on from the coaching position um, with Liquid, and he's the one that you will have been familiar with at previous events, but Hugzord for the Latam appreciators out there, you will remember him playing for Black Dragons and MIBR. He was Shotgun involved hero with at one point, yeah. He was um, involved with Team Singularity as well just before coming into Liquid. So an absolute ton of experience from Hugsord and he's just doing what he can there to try and give some feedback into the players. Obviously three down. This is the time that they need to start winning some rounds. It's not panic stations just yet for Team Liquid. We say this continuously for Villa. It's not as much so as it was, but it is a defender-sided map. You expect defences to be coming out with at least a 3-3-4-2 three, three, half. If you're not doing that, you've got a bit of a problem. So Liquid, if they can take two of these three rounds on attack, I think they'll actually be pretty happy with that outcome. They'll be okay with it. I love how Kino nearly has more kills than everyone else combined in the server. That's just how those first three rounds have <laughs> played out. And most definitely more than everyone on Liquid combined so far. They haven't been looking too good, though. We do always like to say, Tim, Siege is a game of two halves. When we get Liquid on the defensive side, except maybe the ones that struggle to attack. So let's see how we'll get up to that point and see whether or not Liquid can turn their fortunes around at that point. They've still got three attacking rounds to figure things out here. It does feel a little bit lacking so far in aggression and pace on their attacks. And Exit just have the full run of the mill here and choosing what they do. 
Spirit's just going to be, for the time being, inside of Statuary. If you remember, I said there may be a little bit of a north-sided push coming in from attackers, and that's why we've got this utility here. It's just an extension of the defence of sight, which is Aviator Games this time around. Spirit's is going to try to drop himself away, but he gets caught as he gets caught as he tries to drop the hatch, and it's going to be Ask who finds that kill with a headshot. He's able to move up and take control of Astro, and that actually gives them the north side of the map. But, but, we've got Gomez all the way down there in base. Des and Liquid have been hit on the flank previously. Yogger onto PSK, if you remember, when it, they were attacking onto Trophy and Statuary. So they need to learn that lesson and make sure it doesn't happen again. Diaz, he's going to find Paulo, shut him down. Paulo's been very quiet so far, as has Nesk. And right now, Liquid need one of those big names to step up and really start firing. Yeah, all the kills coming in for the new boys here in Ask and Reset. It's the same they've been here for a while now, but those are the two that are currently putting on a little bit of a show. Ask once again, by the way, has found Spirits on the Entry. I think that's been two or three times now that he's is struggling him. to get into the game. He here, is, yeah. yeah. He's getting out there and being cheeky. I admire the confidence, and you don't mind when you've got players behind you like Kino that can pick up the kills anyway. But it is a bit of a struggle for him, as much as it has been for a lot of Liquid. Diaz finding himself is second in the round. This time, Asko and now the man we were just talking about, leaving PSK, Nesk, and resets to do it all here in the last 60 seconds. Nesk, he's going to push in. Does he find his first? No, shut down from Diaz. behind the bar. Diaz is going to serve him up a treat there as he manages to find the head shot right across the site resets he's just standing around on that study door manages to rotate and get one through the hole that's been opened oh, up gonna casual. Find Diaz Kino casual as you like as you say there's on to resets leaving us now PSK in a 1v3 and this is unlikely he's down to about 15 20 health and he's really got to make this happen they know exactly where he is look at this Kino he's got the SMG out he's he trained on it. he knows he's behind the maps table he's gonna take the peak he's gonna take oh. the kill <laughs> it's just as easy as that for Kino what a shot from him look at the casual flick to the side Kino take a bow because that was a beauty I'm keeping count Tim he's 12 and 1 now 12 and 1 <laughs> what is that inside four rounds it's ludicrous but putting up the kind of numbers that you want to see if your backline play well not really your backline players admittedly you know your entries can do the work but you'll take it where if the front line falls down you've got a solid backline to lean on afterwards X set 4 and 0 liquid still scrambling to find anything here to get them into the game. Favourites for the tournament, by the way. <laughs> by the way. The thing is, Tim, I think every everybody can have a bad day. That, that was a joke. Everybody can have a bad day. No, no, no you weren't joking. All oh, right, okay. You, you were dead serious. No, because they actually... Liquid not looking great. They, no, 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 you know, they, they, lost they, they are tournament favourites. You're They're not, not looking as that. good as we might expect. No. Lost a Fury last night. Come in here. Now 4-0 down to... to exit. And just... The problem is, Des, that they just don't look competitive. That's the thing. They're just getting absolutely run over at the minute. And part of that is, yeah, standout performance from Kino, 12-1. and one, But... You gotta shut him down in that case. You gotta put the focus on him. You gotta say, right, which operators is he playing? Let's just make sure we pick up where he is and let's go in and make sure we've got numbers on him. <laughs> the big difficulty is he's your smoke player. He's gonna be sat in vault right as far back from the action as possible until you're pushing in with no utility. You might be on half HP, you've got no drones. Akino's like, you basically wanna attack me empty handed? Yeah, sure, I'll just dome you with the SMG. What's that all about? As I said, coming in, you know, Bodega more than familiar at playing against Liquid, and it's starting to show at the minute because X are just setting up for this absolutely perfectly. They don't look troubled. Tim. No, that's what I mean. No matter what Liquid try, it just doesn't really seem to break X set down at all. PSK, PSK taking a ton of damage there, losing about 40 in that initial engagement. Spirits this time having a little bit of better luck, actually. He's lost a lot of those early fights. Four so far to my count, not necessarily as the entry death, but at least very early kills in the round. Um, he just manages to take that bit of damage, get himself back behind his shield and just continue fighting. And that's going to make this a much better round for Spirits. Just crawling all over this bedroom balcony right now. Look, which you can see where the attention's going to be. But look double at this double shield. setup. Yeah, I didn't see the one on the bed, to be fair. It's interesting, but freely taken away. You don't really have any ADS to support it, but it will force what would normally be a Zofia on the side of Liquid to get rid of without that being present. Instead, it's the Gon 6, I believe, coming out from Nesk or potentially resets to get that one cleared away. They've still got six frag grenades to play with, though, Tim, but look at it again. You've got the Aruni to go through. You've got the laser gate to burn through. You've got shields. You've got a target. There's a lot of utility they've got to yet chew through. And again, it's only 40, 75 seconds in the round, but it just makes me nervous for Liquid that they can't pick up the pace here and get things moving. That, it's going to take oh, it. What? That, 
Keynote steps up onto Astro window and he finds... Uh, honestly, I believe at this point that Kino could just shoot a bullet in the air and probably come down and get a kill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? <laughs> there is absolutely nothing that this man can do wrong. He is flying. But the point that I was going to make about Spirits of Shield position in concrete, it's actually great because it's going to take a minimum of three pieces of utility to get rid of him. You've got the laser gear. You've got the ADS to get through. You've got the shield to get past. That is a lot of utility to burn just to take one man out of concrete. That's exactly it. And the, the hero, he's looking to try and use those nades oh, from below. Oh, oh, oh you Nesk, can do that to him. Nesk is stepping in, gets one onto the four spirits, who's fallen apart. But Nesk, finding himself finally. This is a 4K in the making here. It's starting to feel like it. He's channeling, he's holding down Diaz, down to a sliver, making a 4K for Nesk. Just go, man, it's an ace for Nesk. That's the way to get Liquid back in the game. Honestly, that's what I said it two rounds ago. They need one of the big names to step up and really light a fire under the team. Nesk, as he has done so many times before, is that player. Comes out with an ace, casual as you like, moving through, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Gets the job done, round on the board for Liquid, and that leaves us now heading into round six. And I did say, if they can get 4-2 at the half, they are not necessarily going to be happy. They're not going to be happy because they've had a tough time against Exeter, but they're at least going to be satisfied, I think, given the way that this game has gone so far. So this one is a really important round for Liquid now. So much so, except they know that. They're going to move on. They're not going to go back to Trophy Statue area. They're not going to bother with that one after Nesk has just run an ace on them. So it's downstairs they go, and they try to hold on. We saw them successful here in round three. If they can lock this out 5-1 on the half, that is a great start for the North American side. You've got the Valkyrie on side, plus two C4 to so play behind. That's wonderful utility to be able to make use of. Informs C4s, there is no greater danger. And I think Liquid are acknowledging that as well, paying some respect to the Valkyrie in switching over to the IQ, removing the Twitch from the board. We spoke about this quite a bit on the A stream yesterday, Tim, how attacker repick does enable this sort of thing to really come into its own. Even more so when you get some creative picks beyond the IQ, like the Amaru coming out of Nesk. Now, we've seen some really interesting executes from below up hatches, for example. This site, this site not really one where you have that opportunity, so I want to see what Nesk game plan is it could just be to get good top floor control quite quickly to cut off someone on the retreat and that's what I'm looking for potentially Ness to come away with here just gonna be checking his drones for the time being looking round 90 corridor just highlighting there you go he's gonna go straight in now that he knows there's nobody there looking to aggressively take top floor control takes out the default they don't spot him there was nobody on there but the fact that the default has been taken out is going to be all the information they need to know that there's somebody in and around 90 so need to be aware of that yoga is playing down in living room and we saw him hit that nitro on to ask last time around he's going to be looking for it in a similar location but in this time it's going to be nesk who's moving around there so we'll see how successful he is. Nesco already having taken out the Valkyrie cam that was watching that area. He's going to have to stop to take the goo mine out and he's going to be coming to a challenge with Gomez pretty soon. We've got a yellow pin there Almost. just helping Yogger. It very nearly catches Nesco. Does a little bit of damage but not quite enough. Enough to tickle him there but in comes Parlo. If it's not Nesco, it's the other. In comes Spirits. Does finally get his first kill of the game on to Ask but traded out immediately by Nesco on the other side. Again, PSK coming forward. Liquid starting to light up that scoreboard not just in this round, but also the last one, clearly inspired by Nesk's ace and Tim. They could well snatch away here a couple of rounds when it felt like they might find zero. Oh, for sure. It's certainly looking that way right now. Four versus two. PSK on very low health. Doesn't matter when Palu's finding the kills, though. He's going to shut down Kino and it leaves Diaz 1v4. He's inside a site and all he can do is sit and wait for Liquid to push him now. They've got plenty of time. One minute, ten left on there. Palu on the sledge. He's just going to go to town on the floor above him, I think. Um, Liquid have probably got a good idea of where Diaz is there and those stun canisters are going to tell them everything they need to know Nesk finding that final kill and it's just a really good example of that Zofia utility and how it can be used almost in a similar way to a heartbeat scanner from Pulse to locate an enemy send it in there does it detonate instantly yes it does that's where Diaz is go in make the challenge close the round 4-2 and Liquid have managed to rescue something out of that first half it took them four rounds to wake up Des but they are back this is the problem right again being at 3-0 you just can't write the other team off I would say there's two halves to a game of Siege. Well, the six rounds to a half, Tim. So even at 3-0, 4-0, when it looks completely lost for Liquid, you just can't guarantee that that's going to continue for the next couple. Except find the 4-2. 
you'll be happy. Probably gutted that you couldn't turn it into a 6-0, given how well they played in those first four. Liquid not even showing up to the party. But once Kina lost his life early in that round as well, well, we saw how things broke down from there. Here, though, with them on the attacking side, it's time for them to show a little bit of flair and Liquid to try and even out the score a bit more. Going to be Aviator Games for Liquid to kick things off then. Going to have a lot of utility on those south stairs. We've got the barbed wire, we've got the ADSs. Nesk is going to leave. I'm wondering if it's going to be Ask on the smoke more than likely, who will probably play in that position. If they do have a man there, they might not actually choose to. He's just opening up those vertical holes behind bar as well that look down onto those stairs. It just means that he can be supported a little bit, deploying a shield as well, extra utility. So definitely going to be holding on to those south stairs and as I say can be supported from inside of sight somebody playing um, around that bar with the vertical angle that goes down onto the bottom of the stairs look at that he's getting aggressive gonna take a drone down mm. but there could be a challenge coming in just behind it from main door as well very similar to what we saw Spirits doing when they were on the defensive side as he'd be trying to challenge onto that double door. So nothing kind of new or over-aggressive being done here. Again, it's identical to what we've already seen. Difference being the Spirits likely by now was dead and Ask is still alive on the smoke with all three canisters in back pocket. He'll just be playing around those stairs now to try and burn through as much time as he can with those three canisters in the back pocket. I'm looking towards Nesto and Reset who are out and about playing on the Jaeger and on the Alibi. You've also got PSK on the Malusi. So lots of potential roaming coming in from the of liquid but except being very careful and cautious about their approach look we're just dumping a nade into study there likely to clear out some utility and they're just getting themselves sorry except dumping the nade in just looking to get themselves poised for the push in Nesky's going to get quite aggressive here and there is one just down there he sees where the flash comes from he knows that the man is prone but with the full light flash he has to dip away can't take that fight but for the time being he is holding except up on this outsided push they're trying to find their kind of entry point here, right? Just step around the corner with an eight in hand as well. Does chip onto Nesk. Doesn't take him out. Down to about 70, far from the end of the world. Not being swung in there from the doorway of Aviator. That's where I thought they might get a little bit of pressure. A wonderful nade tucks in. Does chip away at PSK, but that's the problem, Tim. It's all chip. It's no kill. And that's exactly what Liquid have found back. PSK, 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 and Ask both on the board here. Two kills to start things off. So even with that chip damage, it's still not enough to deter Liquid. Diaz just trying to pepper shots into sight there. He's not going to get any joy with that, though. 5v3. And this is where Liquid can be at their strongest quite often, Des. They've got the man advantage, and they can start sitting back a little bit and letting Xset play into them. Take the fights at their will, as Ask will do on the oh. stairs. He downs one with the shot here, but Gomez manages to get the kill just to keep Kino alive. He's going to have an opportunity to revive him as well, but he's just being cautious because he knows that Nesk has been playing in and around that area and no surprise to see Kino taking a long crawl away from that so that he can get picked up safely before they return to this attacking push. Want to avoid that vertical as well that could have been held from inside of Barca so just getting out of line inside of that at the same time I think there. One inside of Vault here, one set of top red and one took just inside of bar for the defenders. So for Exit it's about clap, uh, clamping down a couple of those members here and oh the long angle they forgot about the one on 90. A C4 from below, DS gets one but PSK is there for the response. Liquid with a convincing round seven. All starting to look a little bit different now that the Brazilian team has woken up. Exit have got some work to do because they find themselves on the back foot. That's three rounds in a row for Liquid. They've got the momentum, they've got the defence, and this could start getting difficult. They could even better Exit potentially and have a look for that 5-1 defensive half that would take them the win, but it's not going to be easy for Liquid to take a full three points here. They're going to be heading next of all to Trophy and Statuary in round eight, and to be honest, that round was very, very convincing from Liquid. What I liked of what they were doing was a good example would be Nesk on those south stairs when he was just battling with Study, but he just knew when to dip back, when to pressure, when to fall back, and they were just it, they left Exet chase, chasing shadows. Really, there was just never anybody in front of them for the gunfights. The free BC4 as well. You know, the vertical control. Liquid yeah. just had everything playing in their favour, and I think Exet left themselves a little too much to do. Even that push up main stairs, but you know, crawling back down, getting the rare, stepping up the top of it. At that point, there were 25 seconds left of what was previously about 50. So they just didn't have the time to get done what needed to be done. Trophy and statue though, as you say, Tim, is our next site up towards the north side of the map. And the attackers here need to pull something out of the bag. I think it's something a little bit different because they did echo it earlier on, Tim. You know, it's all good Kino getting so many kills across three or four rounds, but those hero plays, what happens when he's not finding those kills? 
And looking down the scoreboard on next set, really only looking at Diaz as another player who's putting some numbers on the board right now. Yoga Gomez and Spirits still pretty absent, to be honest. Well, that's it. You called it exactly right. I think it was it 12 kills across four rounds. And yep. then, you know, we're at round eight now and we've got 13 kills. Exactly. So that's it. Somebody else needs to step up. And that's not a criticism of Kino. It's just the fact that the rest of the team need to now start chipping it's in. It's a fragile lead is the way I look at it. It normally. is indeed at the minute. And honestly, you, I would guess that Liquid very possibly tie this up on the top floor side. I think this is going to come to those third choice sites. That's going to be Exet's opportunity to look towards a potential overtime here or maybe just being able to nick it but it's not going to be easy for them resets he's going to be playing out in 90 corridor on the south side at the minute the site of course is the north side of trophy and statuary but he's aware that there's pressure coming from Kino and Gomez off this study balcony they want to get themselves inside the map but they're just a bit tentative at the minute Des they know that he's Ooh. there Kino with a beautiful shot onto Nestor we were just saying what happens when he's not finding his kills it might not matter this round as he starts himself off with a beauty I'm not at all trying to hint that it's Definitely going to happen, Tim. But you were quite sad, almost tearful yesterday when there was an ace by ace from ace into an ace. In you ace just say ace, ace now. I am, mate. I don't know how many layers there are to it. But you were gutted it wasn't you casting it. It was Morgley with an ace on ace, and it would have been quite fun as ace to cast that. Exactly, mate. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, if resets keeps on hitting shots like that, it's not going to happen. Kino's still in it for now, though, after bounding the first kill. So one for one on either side right now. Yogg's holding on to the window, hoping someone's going to step across into him a little bit blind here. It's the other side of the soft wall, though. And otherwise, I think there's a Malusi holding down here. Yellow ping at her feet, so they know roughly where she is. Kino's found the second, though, Tim. Is it happening? Long way to go no. yet. PSK says <laughs> absolutely not. Shuts him down, and it's going to be Yoga instead heading in through that 90 oh. window. Gomez nearly finds his man, but they just managed to dip away 3 v three palu taking a little bit of damage but certainly nothing that is going to be too drastic 45 seconds left to go and it's time for xset to think about getting themselves inside a site how can they get themselves established and interestingly so far in this one there's with seven rounds in this is round eight and we haven't seen a, an attempt at a plant yet we haven't seen an opportunity no. for a team to put the diffuser down on the ground and that's maybe something xset can start thinking about and trying to work that space into site get that control but if the push comes here no how does diaz win that PS SK knew that it was coming, but the pre-fire from Diaz absolutely perfectly placed. Manages to find his man, take him out. Palu just dips himself back into master bedroom. He's waiting for the push. He sees the man. He can't find the kill. Yoga manages to get asked. It's all up to Palu. Shut down as he comes out of the smoke. No problem for Diaz to see the last and shut him down. That's going to be Exet finally stopping Team Liquid's rampage. Very slow and patient from Exet, and I liked it, to be honest. I thought it was quite smart. So rather than just trying to pile their way in towards site, what they first tried to do was set up this pincer on that main 90 hallway that kind of spread across the top of Red Landing. And you saw the push through. They were about half a second too late. Otherwise, they could have snapped the jaws shut and got a couple of kills onto Liquid. But when it came to actually executing on the site, a beautiful swing in from Diaz, enough to get them moving. Even in a three versus three, they find the close. That's Exet at five and three. And who the hell is that shouting? Bodega? I'm going to give you a guess. Um, I think it might be Bodega. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I was, I was about to say, mate, the round, the round ended about 45 seconds ago and you're still He's going. He's still going. <laughs> He's still giving it plenty. <laughs> but uh, very vocally supporting his team there. And as he should, as he should. As he should, why not? Absolutely. I support, I support you very vocally, mate. You do indeed. You yeah, do give you a bit of shine in the head today. Yeah. Looks great, I mean, it needed, you know, obviously it was needed. A little pick-me-up. <laughs> See, what people don't know is we do that every day. Exactly. Oh, I wake up and just like knock on your door. Come here, Tim. I've got the cloth. Made a quick little go. quick shine. Done. That's it. Normally it starts with us messaging each other about half past five in the morning saying, hey, you up? You up? And in the US, that normally is yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think Fresh joked earlier, he's adding, what, half an hour a day an to hour his wake up time? Of dealing with <laughs> I the think he's at like half past six in the morning I'm right now. I'm at the now. point where I'm managing to fall back asleep. So I still wake up at 5 a.m. every morning, uh, but I'm managing at least then to fall back asleep. The first uh, the first day that I was here, I was like, wide awake. I'm nah. always the same when I fly in this direction. Fortunately, when I fly, I know everybody's interested. Fortunately, when I fly <laughs> home, I'll be absolutely fine straight away. One night's sleep and I'm back to normal. But yeah, when I fly out this way, I'm always bad for jet lag when it's I get just here. the mindset, mate. 
just got to develop that mindset and you'll be absolutely If only sound. I didn't believe in that, that don't believe in, scientifically don't believe in it, proven condition. No, no, that's uh. it. Our good friend XR Troika once taught me it is just a mindset. And so far, it's done it pretty well. The mindset, though, needs to really be instilled here for Liquid. Yes, they had themselves a wonderful three-round spree, but couldn't find that fourth to bring things dead even. Xset really warming into that last round. And if they've warmed into the attacking, uh, attacking side of things quicker than Liquid, I start feeling uh, nervous upon that side that everyone, again, is coining to win this entire major. If they find themselves losing out here, suddenly questions will start turning. If not Liquid, who? Yoga gets himself up into the pantry there, looking to pressure directly onto site. We are defending dining and kitchen with Team Liquid here. Spirit's looking to send in a nade there. Not going to get any joy. May well have taken out some utility, but that will be oh, it. Ask. Drones are raining ask. in. Ask, he goes for it. Takes a lot of damage and does not dish any out. Has to deploy the Toxic Babe Canister just to cover his tracks and get him out of there. He's going to have to drop himself away and just live to fight another day there. But it will at least slow Xset down. It'll make them think twice before pushing in there. They've got Yoga established in Pantry as well. Not too much on the vertical, though. We can still see Liquid players up there, and that could come back to bite them, Des. It just stops you giving away areas of the map for free, essentially, to the side of Exet, who clearly assume they could just march in towards Pantry there and look at getting the wall opened up. Simply not to be the case. Ask almost being chunked out there, down to about 15 HP. A single bullet, enough to knock him over at this point, and it may well come in from Bike Shed, where Kino is just lurking, holding onto that angle, waiting for the opportunity to make the push forward, but really it needs the rest of the team to also start making their moves at the same time. A brief pause as we get towards that last 30 seconds, but Tim, it's about to get explosive with all 10 players left on the board. Ask has got a lot of value out of his hit points, to be fair. I know he gets taken down there as the opening kill, but he's oh. just held them off for so long. And look at this. Nesk, Palu, PSK, all finding their kills. And now Liquid have an advantage. It was 4v2, it's 3v2. Gomez, Diaz, they're the last two alive. They've only got 15 seconds to make this no happen, way. but they might just do it. Des Diaz, he gets one. PSK shuts down Gomez. He's going to need two more here, Diaz. He's going in looking. He <gasps> finds one. Can he get the second? Surely not, Des. He's got the diffuser in hand. He's going to go for the plant here. And you know what? I think he might just get away with it. Palu's too far away to be able to stop him. He's going in for the challenge. Does he find oh, his man? No, yes! Palu! Palu hits him with the shotgun and gets the clutch. He'll disable the diffuser. Unflappable. The thing is, you can't even like spray, like flick yeah. either. It's a shotgun. You get one shot. Yeah, that's it. And he just, the thing is, the confidence is there for him because he just knows that he's going to do it. And the thing is, the rest of the team, you know, I've spoken to him in interviews and outside of the game before, and they've they've said that to me, that with Palu, they just have so much faith, so much confidence that he'll do it for them, that he'll do it for the team. It doesn't matter if he's the last one alive, he'll get the job done. And we've seen it from him countless times, and that's a big round for Team Liquid there. If they lose that one, except they then go on to match point, and it starts looking a little bit dicey. As it is, Liquid locked down their third site, they can Go back to Aviator Games, which they won back in round seven, and things are starting to look a little bit more promising for them to be able to take this the distance at least. Well, Tim, we've got to do the customary thing you do as a caster. You see an Amaru, you get excited about the potential use cases. Now, on some sites, particularly when we're playing on Living and Library, I've seen some really cool executes up hatches from the basement, for example. But otherwise, on this map, you don't really see the kind of in through kids' window on Oregon, getting the plant down. It's not that sort of style. You saw back in the first half, Liquid make use of it to get quick access to the 90 window. So for Gomez, I think you might see much the same. The only change here, really, is you need to stop yourself getting swung up from the bottom of 90 when you do go for that play. So they really need to try and force the player away from the bottom of main stairs. That's going to be quite challenging as Spirits. He is not having a good game, Tim. He's 1 and 10. I think about 0 and 4 on entry at this point, just struggling to have any real impact. Yeah, it's been really tough for him. He's taking that opening death or at least dying early in the round quite frequently. And it just seems like nothing will work out for him. Gomez going to be moving through, taking out those default cams, just trying to get some ground, trying to create some space for Xset here. But Team Liquid, they just feel like they're starting to smother them. Nesk in this position again, on side stairs. And as I said last time, he played it so beautifully. Great understanding of when to push, when to drop back, when to apply that pressure. Now then, Yoga sees the man on red stairs, but guess what? He's gone. There's no point with your shots because he's all the way down in basement. He's going to take a little bit of damage from above there. And this is starting to look difficult for Xset at the halfway mark. All righty, stepping things forward from here then. In that five versus four, it's looking a little bit dicey for Xset at least to start things out because let's not forget with Spirits, i said it so many times, you lose the Nano, you lose the Nades, you lose the lot. Gomez finally looking to try and make this play in towards 90 as the EE1D rings out. 
Is he convinced this is the time to make the go? Apparently not yet. How long until they pull that trigger, Tim? I think he's waiting possibly on information. He needs somebody to be in 90 corridor, I think, because he just wants to burst in there and get the kill and just be that catalyst. Here he goes, as you see, aiming straight down long there. Doesn't find anybody. Resets manages to get Kino, and this is not looking good for Xset right now. They've still got north-sided clearance to do. They've got 55 seconds, and they've only got three men versus five. It is going to be very tough for them from here. Going back to Long Gomez is looking to get something going. He knows exactly where Nesk is going to be playing, but he can't do anything about it as Nesk just peeks out from behind the bar and absolutely cuts him down inside of 90 Corridor. I feel like we're going to be saying this far too many times this competition, Tim, but it looks like all 12 rounds of regulation will be on the way unless some absolute miracle befalls Diaz here. He's got to find five kills in 30 seconds. It's not going to happen. Liquid even make it a flawless. And again, looking back to when we were at 4-0 to Exit, Liquid were not even present in the game. Look at how things have turned around now. They found five in the last six. Whew, fantastic for Liquid, like you say, really fought themselves back into this one. And you could have, you know, they could have been forgiven for feeling a little bit beaten up after that opener. But the tack timeout just before round four, they lost the round following it. But from there on in, whatever Hooks had said seems to have certainly been working. And a few players have woken up as well, which has helped. So heading into round 11, as you said, we guaranteed all 12 of regulation here. One team will get the opportunity to win this out and take the full three points. If nobody can get the next two rounds, then we will be going to overtime if it is one each. It will leave us Did we have two or th three games of overtime yesterday? Was our last game overtime? We definitely had two. I don't we think did our last two. one was overtime. I can't remember. It was very long, by the way. It was. It was a busy day. Did both Dark Zero games for us go to? Yes. Yeah, they, they won one, lost one. Lost to W7M, beat G2. 8-7 as well as the 1v1 between Citizen and Eclipse yes. on Cafe oh, towards Red Corridor, the side plank coming out of train. Fun story about that, by the way, for those of you who haven't seen Citizen's Twitter. He tweeted and said, in that 1v1, it was a 1v2 before, Citizen gets a kill. Alamal then goes, yeah, nice, and didn't hear the call out that Eclipse was then swinging from train and Citizen dies. So you can blame everything about that first game on Alamal. That's harsh. <laughs> I mean, all of G2 did. They just ripped on him for it. I was like, damn. Just but overexcited. Just overexcited, just like our Tim here. I don't know what you mean. Heading into round 11, then we're going to have the south sided push coming in here. It's going to be a trophy statuary attack for Exet, but they want to get themselves established from study and move across. Look at Nesk, he's getting aggressive. He's on the alibi, and I always feel like when a player switches to alibi, you just know they're feeling it. Citizen is one that always comes to mind. Black because Ray. Yeah, Black Ray as well. If they switch on to the Alibi, you just know that they're feeling it. They want the storm and they just want to go crazy. And right now, Nesk is sat on 11 kills and I think he's maybe got an eye on catching up with Kino. <laughs> Alibi players are generally saying, I am the speed. Just charging around on the three-speed operator with a semi-decent gun as well. The impacts to open up rotates. You name it. Just a very good operator in those situations when you want to get out on the road. There are definitely some doubters out there and Ness was doubting himself for a second, but that three-speed helping him evade that frag grenade that came flying in from Go. So far, Exet still finding themselves pinned back here. One or two members of Liquid doing a lot of damage and holding them back inside a study, yet unable to get any control of Aviator games. That's it, just not able to move Ness whatsoever. He's going to need to be careful here, because if Diaz is able to move up those red stairs, no, he's going to dip away. Let's see, if he manages to get himself up to the top of red stairs, that's Ness completely cut off, and there'd be very little chance of him getting out of there mm. alive. But as it is, he may well be able to scarper should he feel the need to. But PSK, he's deep inside a site on that Kaid for the time being. Just trying to monitor, I think, give that information. Are they pushing into Master? Are they not? And for the time being, it is not. And honestly, Des, Exit, they've made very little progress so far. They've done a complete rotation. Tim. We hit that 140 mark and they were like, right, boys, we're really being held back here. We don't have an easy way through a big aggressive hold inside of the study side. Let's move up top instead. Ask is still sat on the stairs, mind you, though, as we find only three men left standing for Exit. Diaz bringing one back. Ask not able to find anyone. There's still one on the window as well. Two kills going back the other way. And now Ask surely needs to back his way down towards Red Stairs, rejoin his team as Nesk is under pressure from inside of Master. So Exet, despite being short on time, not being able to get a fully prepped Master take going, have still managed to get two kills back. Great little passage of play for them, really. They've got themselves a little bit of a presence now that they can work from. They've got the, um, the means available to them, 3v3. They're not 
outplayed in that sense. Neski's just waiting for this challenge to come through. He absolutely wants it. 2v2 as Ask gets Diaz, but then traded out by Yoga. Kino looking to get something going from Master, but very aware of the potential of Nesk on the left. But he's one step ahead of you. He's already gone. He's just through there oh in the boy. vestibule. He gets taken down, and it's going to be all up to Palu now. Out goes <gasps> the impact in. And oh, he's got him. He drops the diffuser. He's going to be out of here. There's no way that Palu is going to play for the kill there. He's too smart. He's played this game far too much. And his experience shows there as he wins the round for Liquid. Because they were absolutely beaten up at the beginning of this. But it's them now with the opportunity to take a full three points. And I did mention earlier in the game, I said, you know, these are the tournament favourites. And they were being made to look like rank amateurs after those first few rounds. Yes. But this is starting to show now. I've said it a couple of times. And it always is worth saying in tournaments. If you're going to win it, you've got to be able to win your difficult games. Yeah, it's great coming out and getting your 7-2. But when you're 4-0 down, those are the ones you've got to win. Those are the ones you've got to be able to grind out if you want to be a champion. And Liquid is showing that they might just be able to do that right now. You've got to win it in Fergie time, Tim. Got to do it wherever you can, wherever you can. I've got to give some explanation to that because I love using that expression more often than I probably should. Fergie time, Manchester United, football club in the UK. Many of you will have heard of them. I'm sure pretty much all of you have. Very renowned for finding a, a last second goal in a game that was nil-nil up to the point and getting the winner in extra time. And just pulling it basically out of the bag when it looked like everything was lost or they'd walk away with a point. Liquid here, when it looks completely lost at 4-0 so far, have pulled it all the way back to this point. Just one more round. They walk away with all three. And given how it started for Exit, they are going to feel hard done by. But sadly, when only one or two players are showing up, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Going to be a dining defence this time around. That's going to be the last stand for Liquid as they try to close this one out. They were able to win dining previously. It's a bit of an offside, but it was round nine. It came down to a Palu clutch, which many of the rounds have, to be fair. The last yep. one did as well. Palu doing an absolutely fantastic job for Liquid today's kills. Might not be that high on the scoreboard, but they have certainly been extremely valuable, the ones that have come. Now, last time around, Exet were able to get the diffuser down. It Came to a 1v1, Diaz was able to get that plant, but wasn't able to hold on to it. This time, they need to get a little bit more control a little bit sooner, I think, x It was all a little bit rushed towards the end of the round. That's what we call impact kills, Tim, for Palu. You haven't always got to be the one picking up a 3k and then losing the round either way. It can just be those one or two kills that you get in a 1v1 or a 1v2 that get you the round win. And as you said yourself, he didn't want to turn around and go for the one versus one. He just got out of dodge and won it on time alone. And Exit knew the round was doomed from that point forward. Gomez working his way forwards here on the Jackal. has got a little pin coming in on the top side. But as soon as he hits or shoots that door or breaks through a laser gate, that's all the indication Liquid will need. They've got to be more careful and start backing away. Spirit on the push up the back stairs here after resets five. Kino, the man who's picked up all these kills for them. Gomez finally getting something back, and Spirits, he goes 1 and 12 to me. It could not have gone much worse for him. It's just all fallen to tatters. Four versus three to Liquid. Reset's pushing forward here. Can't find the man in the bathroom. Yoga, he's going to take him down, but there's the nitro from Palu. We've seen him using those explosives well today, and that's going to be Yoga off the board. 3v2 now. Except a lot of work to do. They've got the vertical, they've got time, they've got 45 seconds to start posturing and positioning and getting themselves in to sight to think about getting that diffuser down but they're going to need kills in order to do it they know at least where one is just inside of the door there but it's unlikely that they're going to get any joy from dropping nades down hatches like that 30 seconds left to go Gomez heading down the red stairs and you just get a feeling that they may be not 100% sure of just exactly where everybody is Palu he's going to play oh, in Memorial hold. and just try to hold them out here and this is not going to be an easy challenge for them they're looking to work as a pair although maybe separated now oh. Oh, he finds it. the kill with the SMG and closes down Gomez. And there is the shouting that matters. Bodega was giving it plenty throughout the game, but Liquid, now that they've fought their way back in, they're making themselves known. I, I can't believe the momentum shift that we saw in that game as well, Tim. Massively in favour of Exet to start. Then Liquid.